Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. And in today's video, we're talking about charity and the gifts that our Heavenly Father promises us and how to take advantage of them. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. We're coming out of the book of True Life teaching four. Now, what you're looking at here is the Word document that we use to print 10 copies of this great book of True Life. We were able to get it down to about a thousand pages. But if you're interested in purchasing one of these, or if you're interested in getting one for free, stick around to the end of the video and or look for links below. But like I said, we're going to come out of teaching four down here in about verse 74. And what I'll do is I'll step down through these verses, reading them, and then coming back and adding some information that I happen to know about some of what we're talking about here. I've been experimenting with some of this charity. And I believe a lot of people will benefit from these and these scriptures. So let's go ahead and let's look at verse 74. It says, most of you, disregarding your spirit, come to ask for the body, bread, balsam, employment, and for each one I perform a miracle, because these also will be testimonies that tomorrow will kindle the faith and hope within the hearts of your brethren. However, do not ask for so little. That which appears to be so much to you will soon end. It is best that you ask for eternal blessings, spiritual benefits. In addition, I will grant you that which pertains to the world. So now this is very important here. A lot going on in this verse. So let's take it a little slow. He says, most of you, not all of you, disregarding your spirit. Okay, so many people, we should have a, a side class about the spirit and how important the spirit is but we've covered this in, in in many videos what he's saying is disregarding our spirit and only thinking about the material things in life we come to ask for the body bread balsam and employment and stuff like that this balsam of course is healing so we're asking to be healed or we're asking for money or something like that. And he says, for each one of you, he performs a miracle. In other words, he gives us what we ask for. And he says he does so because these also will be testimonies that will kindle the faith and hope within the hearts of our brothers. In other words, make them believe. But then he goes on to say, but don't ask for so little, little things. He says, these things of the body, bread, balsam, and employment, these things he's saying that they're little and he says, don't ask for these little things. He says that which appears to be so much to you will soon end. So all these things which are materialistic in nature seem to be much to us now will actually come to an end. And of course, he's referring to the pole shift or the great earthquake. It says it is best that you ask for eternal blessings, spiritual benefits. OK, and this is the kind of stuff you would ask, you know, to be more charitable. For example, you would ask to be more humble. For exa example, you would ask for virtues. In other words, you ask them for virtues instead of uh, material uh, things. This is what he means when he says ask and you shall receive. He's not necessarily talking about a brand new Lexus. You know, he's talking about these eternal blessings and spiritual blessings. If we ask for those, he will give us those. You know, if we want more patience, we have to ask for more patience. He says, in addition, I will grant you that which pertains to the world. And this is why I wanted to do this video, because I think I'm understanding why, at least some of why all of this is starting to happen around us. So let's look at verse 75. It says, I have more to give you than you can possibly ask me. Therefore, do not be satisfied with so little. So talking about these material possessions, don't be satisfied with the cars and the houses. There's so much more that we can and should be asking for. Ask for spiritual things instead, especially when we are in the midst of our prayers, we'll ask for those virtues like faith and charity and you see right here 
like in 76, he talks about charity where he says, I can transform your hearts into inexhaustible fountains of charity. I can fill your minds with inspirations and your lips with words. I can give you the gift of healing and the power to disperse all darkness and overcome evil. Now, compare this to material possessions that we could ask for, like he mentioned up there, employment, food or bread, things for the body or the healing. Those are the things for the body. But down here, he's talking about the things for the spirit. And he's talking about transforming your hearts into an inexhaustible fountain of charity. Could you imagine that where you all of a sudden become a philanthropist and all you want to do is just give away things as fast as you can? And he says that he could fill your minds with inspiration and your lips with words. In other words, he can have you sounding like a prophet or somebody who knows a lot about scripture only because you are asking for that. If you're asking for that, he can do that for you. He says, I can give you the gift of healing and the power to disperse all darkness and overcome all evil. So could imagine if you could overcome all evil, why do you need a lot of this stuff up here? A lot of this stuff like healing. Um, why do you need healing if you're not worried about illnesses or sicknesses? So that's what he's saying. You know, don't be concerned with those small things when he can offer us so much more. Now, let's look down here in 77. He who has these aspirations will behold within himself the virtues which had been ignored within his spirit. Who will close his door to whoever knocks? When he possesses such gifts, what pathways will seem long and rocky to the one who is blessed with my strength? What seasons will seem so inclement if he can have command over the very elements? So these are talking about these virtues here. If we aspire to have these virtues, then we will have these blessings that is talking about here. So the main takeaway of this lesson is that we are to ask for spiritual gifts. Now let's look at verse 78. Oh, my disciples, your greatest mission will be that of charity. Many times you will perform it in secret without any display not letting your left hand know what your right hand has given. But there will be occasions when your charity will have to be witnessed by your brethren in order for them to learn to share. So notice right here how he says your charity will be your greatest mission. I mean, think about that. This is the scripture saying that our charity is our greatest mission. And this is why I wanted to do this class. You know, we, we, we've been talking about charity for a while, but it's really starting to hit home as we actually start to practice what we've been teaching when it comes to this charity. But this verse, I believe, wants to let us know that there's sometimes when we actually have to make a demonstration of our charity. I'm always afraid to do so because I'm afraid to cancel out those blessings. But he says, sometimes you have to do so as a demonstration of what charity looks like. So that brings me back to these volumes that we are giving away. Um, again, if you want to receive one of these multi-volume sets, um, this is the book of true life. Send me an email to coach in the fight at yahoo.com and we'll start the process of getting you one of these copies that we have. So that's a demonstration of charity and it's actually a demonstration of paying it forward because one of our supporters actually sent us the book of true life that they had printed out. The only difference is it cost them about $800 to have those 12 volumes printed out. And what we've done is reduce them down to a very small font so we can get it down, you know, to only a thousand pages. So ours cost less than a hundred bucks instead of $800. And so we're giving away more than 10 copies to make up the difference. But anyway, like I said, I hate talking about the charity because I believe it cancels it out. So let's just go on. He says, forget about payment. I am the father who rewards with justification of deeds of his children without neglecting a single one. Now, this is the reason why you've hung around this far in the video, guys, I believe, other than the opportunity to get those copies of the Book of True Life. And you can purchase them, too. Um, if you want, but looking at this 
verse right here, what it's telling us is that after we do our charity, what our rewards will be is telling us that our rewards will be the justification for our deeds. Now, I just did a video not too long ago where I was talking about first fruits and my experiences with doing a lot of charity around first fruits. And I may have left the impression that, you know, everything was going to all of a sudden become beautiful and, you know, around your place simply because you started spending money on people. No, that's not what the scripture is saying. But what it's saying here is that our reward for doing charity will be justification for our deeds, justification for our wrongdoings. In other words, we are counseling out sins by doing charity. We don't have to sit down and try to tally up all of the wrongs that we have done so that we can go find those people and pay back the restitution for the wrongs that we have done to them. What we can now do is do charitable deeds and we will be justified for those acts that we have done in the past. This is very big, guys. This is life changing because as of now, those of us who don't understand this or those of us who are not doing charitable deeds are being punished through pain, through sicknesses, through poverty, through uh, persecutions. All kinds of things are coming up on us, helping us to gain our necessary merits to cover up those deeds that we have done to pay restitution for those deeds that we have done well you can pay restitution if you so choose to do so or you can use your charity in order to get justification for those deeds so restitution or justification pain or charity it's up to us now in verse 80, it says, I have told you that if you offer a glass of water with two charity, that gesture will not remain unrewarded. So this is what he's talking about. You know, we're not necessarily going to get a material possession or anything that we can see for offering a glass of cold water in his name, as the Bible says. But what that glass of water will do will be to justify us of some particular deed that we have done. Therefore, we don't have to get punished or pay restitution for that deed because we are now justified by giving somebody, simply giving somebody a glass of water. Now, let me go ahead and add while I'm thinking about it is that this charity includes people close to us. You know, many times we want to leave the house to go do charity. No, like the cliche says, charity starts in our home so we can actually start there. And that reminds me of something else I wanted to squeeze in this video somewhere. I'll just force it in. That is the five love languages. These are ways that we can spread love to one another. It's not always about material possessions like gifts and stuff that we can share with people, but we could also share quality time, acts of service, physical touch, words of affirmation. Anything we can do to bless people is showing brotherly love towards them. But anyway, Let's get back to the verse. 81 says, Blessed are those who on approaching me say to me, Master, I expect no reward for my deeds. It is enough that I exist knowing that I am your son so that my spirit will be filled with happiness. And I say to you, you come weeping because you have lost your way, your health and your ability to work. And it is then that you remember your heavenly father. So like this right here is talking about pain, right? This stuff right here, we come weeping because we lost our way, our health and our jobs or whatever. So we come to him, but that's the pain that we were talking about restitution. But notice this part right here. This is really, really important, you know, especially in everything we've heard so far. It says, blessed are those who on approaching me say to me, master, I expect no reward for my deeds. That's really important because if we don't do this, then we'll get confused thinking that because we're doing charity for our brother, that somehow we're going to get charity in return. As if, you know, if I empty my pockets to the homeless man, my pockets are going to magically fill back up by the time, you know, I get hungry and want some food. Your pockets could remain empty, but what you're actually going to get is justification. So when you do your charity, don't be thinking that you're going to get something behind it. Most of what you will get, you will not even recognize that it's happening. 
You don't even know that it has occurred. You don't know that this justification has taken place or that you're missing out on some of the pain that you are actually supposed to get otherwise. So my point is to do charity. Guys, if you've learned anything from this channel, add this to the list. Do charity as much as you can, as many opportunities that are given to you. Do those charitable deeds, including praying for people, uh, laying hands on people and healing people, but also giving of your material possessions. Um, like the scripture says, if you have two coats, give one of them away. If you don't, guys, you're going to have a closet full of unusable clothes and you're going to wish you had a shared back when you had the opportunity. So take that opportunity to do so now. And in the meantime, you can do a charitable deed by prayer for me and I will do the same for you. Salawama.